Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This, That, or the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month. We'll video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. Ah, shock it. Let's get going. <laughs> That's right, kids. Welcome back to another episode of Marvel Tales of the Future. Yes. We're over 2099. Back to the I future. Am, I am Phil. Joining me, as always, oh, Al 2099 himself. <laughs> it is. That's right. Taking a trip back to the future to 30 years ago. Like how many years ahead? <laughs> yeah. You know, past, present, and future all at the same time. That's right, kids, because yes, we're going to do another episode of uh, Spider Man 2099. Picking up where we left off last time. We did the first yeah. movie. Now we're going to do four through eight. Yes, a couple of excellent stories here. Oh, yeah. I hear David himself. Mm. Oh, my God. Yeah. I just as that intro is playing, you know, I'm like, you know what I need to do? I need to go back and listen back to that interview Charlie and I did with Peter David. And just oh, like, yes. Try to get sound drops from that episode. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to listen to that too. It's been a while. Yeah. Listen to that a couple of years ago. God, that might have been like 2017 or something. Yeah. It's <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. It would be cool to get him back on the show for an interview. Yeah. I, like, I don't, I didn't know. It's, um, I know a while ago he wasn't he having health issues. Did um mm, he was, I yeah. I haven't seen any update. I'm I assume no news is good news. Like he has Yeah. I'm I'm not really sure. Maybe just recuperating in peace and hopefully, yeah. yeah. And he's still working, so that's a good sign. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully he's doing very well now. Yeah. Yeah, because again, I swear every other couple, every week or so, it seems like we're losing another one of our. Uh... Oh God, I know. Peter Peter Gillis was last week. Yeah, yeah. Then uh, wasn't it? Was it Don Perlin not too long ago? Yes. Or yeah. 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 Let's. Yeah, I have the the next ten twenty years are going to be devastating. For, I know. I know. For people in our age bracket, it's going to be just. God awful yeah especially like anyone we talk to personally it's gonna be like oh God. Mm. <laughs> yeah definitely all right but all right let's let's get into two yeah right, let's yeah. not get it on a downer yeah all right yeah let's get in the spider-man issues so yes well, we got five tonight four through eight and we will start with spider-man yes 2099 number four from february 1993 the specialist yes not to be confused with the movie of the same name yes yeah, i was gonna say that was around that era too right <laughs> yeah it was like a year or two around this yeah uh writer peter david of course penciler rick leonardi inker al williamson colorist noel giddings letterer rick parker and editor joey cavallari and sarah mossoff uh Gabriel O'Hara has parked his car on a deserted street with his new girlfriend, Casey Nash, in order to make out. <laughs> Doesn't matter how far the future is, kids. There's some things yeah. that go out of style. That's right. That's always going to be a constant. Anyone on the internet net lately? You got a hawk two on that thing. <laughs> on that <line. laughs> that's the that's the drop I should, I should pull. You got a hawk two and spit on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she asks why he doesn't take her home and he explains that they need to seize the moment as it happens Hale. however oh, right. here's the moment <laughs> <laughs> however <laughs> the romantic moment is interrupted by the corporate assassin known as the specialist as he slices off the roof off the top of Gabriel's car the specialist has come for Casey, but when he grabs her out of the car, she manages to get free and run. Gabe attempts to confront the specialist, only to get pinned to a nearby wall with throwing stars. 
Meanwhile, at Babylon Towers, where I believe we left off last time, Miguel O'Hara answers his door and is grabbed by a member of the public eye. This is part of an this is part of an entourage protecting Tyler Stone, who has come to bury the hatchet with Miguel. This is because with the sudden appearance of Spider-Man, Alchemex has decided to focus on protecting its members. Since injecting Miguel with Rapture, Tyler has noticed, well, he didn't really inject it. I think he drank it. Mm. Tyler has noticed that Miguel has not come for another dose. He figures Miguel went to the black market to get more of the highly addictive drug, but decides to ignore this because he wants to make peace. Miguel daydreams about revealing that he is Spider-Man and forcing Tyler to ingest the Rapture, but snaps out of it when Tyler tries to get his attention. Tyler then assures uh, him that after the disaster at their facility, he is calling an end to all human testing on Miguel's project until all the bugs have been worked out. He has decided uh, this since he has figured out who Spider-Man really is. Miguel is shocked when Tyler says that Aaron Delgado is Spider-Man. He then gives Miguel a vow, a vow of rapture and leaves. All right. Four, we got through four issues, kids. But finally, here we go. Meanwhile, in Latveria. Yes, Fox here he is. Yes. Goes, stay tuned for December, kids. Goes over the footage from Nova York of Spider-Man's battle with Venture. He finds it peculiar that his return was followed by that of Spider-Man and decides to examine these developments further. Back at Babylon Towers, Miguel begins putting street clothing over his Spider-Man costume. When his assistant Lila asks why he is doing this, he explains that he needs to hide the costume in case Tyler Stone has his apartment searched. After willing his finger talents to retract, he goes on to explain that he can't just destroy the costume since it is constructed out of unstable molecules, making it virtually indestructible. Also, since Stone is afraid of Spider-Man, he has decided to use his powers to stick it to Stone, at least until he can find a way to cure himself. When Miguel goes outside, he finds his brother Gabriel waiting for him. When Miguel asks what happened to the roof of his car, he tells him how the specialist kidnapped Casey and asks Miguel to use his connections at Alchemex to find out what happened. Miguel resists this, and when Gabriel tells him that Casey once said that with great power must come great responsibility, Miguel <laughs> quips that she needs to stop reading fortune cookies. Uh, Peter David, I love that. I know. After Miguel dro or after Gabriel drops Miguel off at Elkamax, he goes to a meeting with Tyler Stone. When Stone asks why Miguel is wearing sunglasses, he explains that the Rapture has made his eyes light sensitive. He then begins asking Tyler why he thinks that Aaron Delgado is Spider Man, only to be told that they should discuss it further in Tyler's office. Elsewhere in the facility, Casey Nash demands to know why the public eyes arrested her and is told that she was tried in absentia on terrorism charges. At that moment, Miguel and Tyler are taking a maglev device through the Alchemex building to get to Tyler's office. Stone begins explaining why he thinks Aaron is really Spider-Man. Not knowing what really happened to Aaron Delgado leaves Miguel feeling uneasy. That's when Casey manages to grab one of the guard's guns and attempts to escape captivity. Crossing paths with Tyler and Miguel, she takes O'Hara hostage. Squeezing his arm, Miguel accidentally squirts some of the of his webbing onto the floor. I hate when that happens. <laughs> Which trips up Tyler and the public eye guards while Casey makes her get away with her hostage. On their way out, Miguel and Casey recognize each other. Casey is not impressed to meet Gabriel's corporate brother. After they get outside, she releases Miguel and makes a run for it. With a shadow passing over him, Miguel looks up and sees the specialist chasing after Casey on a hovercraft. Recognizing the specialist from Gabriel's description, Miguel finds himself caught in a dilemma. He thinks about what Gabriel was saying about power and responsibility and decides that great power doesn't create great responsibility, but guilt. Slipping into a Metro Express booth, Miguel quickly changes into a Spider-Man costume and goes after the specialist. Meanwhile, Casey tries to shoot the specialist, but he's able to deflect the bullets with his martial arts skills and weapons. He then cuts her weapon into pieces with his samurai sword. That's when Spider-Man arrives on the scene and snags the specialist craft with a web line, causing him to crash. However, when Spider-Man tries to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the specialist, he quickly realizes how outmatched he is. The specialist quickly overpowers Spider-Man and raises his sword, preparing to land a killing blow. <gasps> and there's our first cliffhanger of the evening, folks. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> I love that talk where, you know, when he's uh, Miguel's talking to Tyler Stone and, you know, he's like, He's like, okay, either way, it's not good. Either Ty either Tyler Stone's lying to me about not mm. knowing Spider-Man or Aaron Delgado's still out because they haven't found his body. He's like, he or right. he's out there alive knowing way too much about this whole thing. So yeah, yeah. 
So that's like a nice, nice other little cliffhanger that's going to hang over his head for a while. Yeah, definitely. Which they will further develop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love the little kind of fantasy sequence where Miguel kind of attacked Tyler Stone and was like, I'm going to ram this down your throat, you creep. You know, he's going to take the rapture and force feed it to him and give him some of his own medicine. I love that. The first time I read that, I was like, oh, wow, is this really happening? And then I, yeah. it turned out, I was like, oh, oh no, that was just in his head. Okay. <laughs> I love, but I, I love the page of doom just sitting there watching footage just, just like, sitting there yeah basically yeah. like yes i encountered him earlier in his career that you know basically like well, the first time he appeared i hit i, I hit him by issue five yes yeah yeah yes, yes. Oh, yes. he's got his he's twiddling his fingers yes yeah exactly you got all these monitors up with footage of spider-man I love uh casey i'd forgotten how much i loved her she's a firecracker yes. i love oh, her. oh yeah she, she's Take, taking the fight right to the specialist she's like shock you she's shooting right at him I love it she didn't take any mess I love Casey Nash she's fantastic yeah I, I, yeah her and Miguel are just like wait wait, wait. she's like what are, what, what's your name O'Hara I was like oh god oh god <laughs> not one of the you O'Hara's no. oh, I love Lila I always love Lila you know especially when mm. he dresses and he's leaving the apartment she's like she's like have a nice day at the office, dear. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. The virtual wife. Yeah, it's fantastic. It kind of spells both ones. <laughs> <laughs> but not a hologram. You need to have uh, something solid. Touch. Yes. You need to have something that you can touch every now and then. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh... <laughs> That's an awfully big ride he's got there. <laughs> I need some muscle and some meat. <laughs> exactly. Uh, that was a whole great power, great responsibility. And it's like, no. Yes. It's just not breathing those fortune cookies. Yeah, I love that. But yeah, that, that is cute, the little Metro Express thing, because he not only does he go into that booth to change, but he's like, yeah, it'll ship my clothes to my house. He's like, hopefully I'm there to meet him. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that part was really cool. Yeah, because that's a nice little panel, too, of him jumping out of that. Uh, yeah. 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 I, that's another thing I absolutely love about this series is the artwork. Oh, sorry. No, I didn't see your comments. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gonna get a chance to send feedback. Sorry, guys. I love these first issues. Uh, when the art mark changes a little later on, it gets a little hairy. Yeah, I wonder, because I only, I was looking earlier, and I only have actually up to issue number 21 mm. of this, and I'm missing the other half of it, because it went up to, what, 50 or something? No, only it only went to what was it like forty? Oh, uh, maybe forty six or something. Yeah, something like that. Well, it's like oh. I, I know for some reason I know Peter David left, and then I think they had a fill in for like the last two issues mm -hmm. or something. Yeah, yeah. I feel like the, the creative team changed right at the end. Yeah, yeah, something. Yeah, like that. yeah. yeah. But, so I, yeah. I still don't know how the series ends. I have no clue. I haven't read it. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to remember. I'm only. I only. I think I'm only missing like one or two of them or some uh, issues mm. or something. Yeah, because I there was I, a span I had missed, uh, but uh, yeah, I filled in most of it except for like uh, one or two. Hmm. I was going to actually go back and get a bunch of the ones that I was missing, but it was of course right around the time that the that the movie had come out across the Spider Verse, mm. so all of the Spider Man 2099 stuff was going for a mint. Oh, everywhere yeah. yeah it was impossible that's what i said anymore i go for back issues i'm like okay who, who which one of these characters may appear in a movie soon so let me scoop them <laughs> up cheap before the price <laughs> skyrockets yes let's consult the uh the scrying stone and see who's gonna get their movie in the next couple of years no i sort of wish they would have left 2099 alone after it petered out you mean after like the first like the run in the 90s eh, i mean i mean peter david has come back to this but i mean some of the other stuff, yeah, but um, uh, like Peter Davis come back. There's, there's a, there's a miniseries out now. Symbiote Spider Man twenty ninety nine, and as you know, it's oh yeah, really? It's, it's Ven Venom twenty ninety nines in it, but yeah, oh. it's, uh, I mean Peter Davis writing it. It's kind of like he kind of because they did a Except couple really. other yeah, Spider Man twenty ninety nine miniseries. Peter David didn't write them. Was it, was it uh, Steve Orlando? I, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think I remember yeah. those. Yeah, but like Peter David's right. Yeah, Peter David's right one now. It kind of picks up like right after his his run on this series yeah oh good so yeah. yeah i'd be interested to read that yeah yeah it depends who's doing it 
for Ooh. me, the 2099 stuff. It depends who's doing it. There was another one. I think, didn't Kurt Busiek do one? Oh, I can't remember. Or, um, oh, I think I I'm think Peter, I, mixed up with something else. I think it was Peter David too. They did his um one around the time it was like right after Superior Spider Man, where like they trapped Miguel in the in the in the present day, and Peter David was mm -hmm. right now he's kind of undercover at Alchemex and so, or oh okay yeah like Alchemex was like just forming or something yeah there was something else it was a mini series I can't remember I'm gonna look it up hmm. but it was um. I could have sworn there was somebody that I really liked that wrote it. Yeah, because there's been a f uh, there's been a few things. I mean, and I don't. I really didn't read it. Was was there a version of of Miguel in like the Exiles or something? Or oh, I think so. Yeah, there was some type of a team that incorporated him briefly. Yeah, what was that thing? This Justin, what was that thing? Oh, was it this Time Storm twenty nine? Time Storm, maybe that's what it was. I know they didn't. They do like a series after, like all the regular books wrapped up. Was like World of twenty ninety nine or something? Or I don't remember. I thought they did like a mini series or something, like wrap it up or something. Oh, oh yeah, hey no. Doom 29 is still the best of the bunch by far. Yeah. Well, stay tuned for December, Noel, because we're going to be doing uh, the first couple issues of Doom 2099 for Doom December. Yes. You're going to get a ton of Doom in December. Justin's going to be doing a bunch of Doom with me, Lilith. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I can't Just, wait for that. Yeah, pretty much all the Marvel shows are going to be doing Doom episodes in December, kids. So. Yeah. Maybe it was this Manifest Destiny. Oh, it was written by Lynn Kaminsky. Okay. Oh. 2099 Manifest Destiny. It was 1998. And it looks like it was a one, one shot. 48 pages. That was good. That was also good. Huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kaminsky. Lynn Kaminsky. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. Manifest Destiny. I couldn't remember. I can't remember if I read that or not, but I do remember hearing about that. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, it, de it depends who's writing the 2099 stuff. Exactly. There's, it's hit or miss. But I love Spider-Man 2099. I love Doom 2099. I'll sing yeah. the praises of that all day long. And I loved X-Men 2099 as well, which mm -hmm. had the same writer same writer as Doom, which was um, John Francis Moore. Yeah. Oh, we're going to get to some of that, too, uh, later in the year on uh, X-Men Classics. Some X -Men yes. Uh, yes. I'm excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know Hulk 2099. Oh. <laughs> He still has nightmares about that. I was going to say, yeah, it's his favorite. It's so much his favorite. He's still twitching. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> <laughs> Traumatized uh, forever from that. Uh, got to rub that one in. Yeah. All right. Should we get to the next one? Yes. Yes. Oh, my. All right. Spider-Man 2099 for number five from March 1993, Blood Oath. Uh, we got the same team here. Yep. Attempting to rescue his brother's girlfriend, Casey Nash, from the specialist, Spider-Man finds himself overpowered by the martial artist. At the specialist's mercy, Spider-Man struggles while his foe tries to remove the reluctant hero's mask. However, the specialist finds it is almost impossible to remove because Spider-Man had the forethought to web his mask to his face. <laughs> Breaking free, he extracts his finger talons and slashes through the specialist's chest armor. Watching this from his office monitors, Tyler Stone calls in his, his assistant, Winston. He orders Winston to interrupt all public eye feeds with the battle between Spider-Man uh, Spider and the specialist. Back outside, Spider-Man continues to battle the specialist. Casey tries to make a run for it. That's when she sees a number of public eye flyboys heading to the scene of the battle. Although it is against her better judgment, she turns around and heads back to see what she can do to help Spider-Man. As the battle continues, Spider-Man wonders why Elkamex would hire a Stark Fujikawa assassin to do their dirty work. At that moment, at the headquarters of Stark Fujikawa, their leader Hikaru and his bo board of directors observe the battle as well. The other directors insist that they do something as the specialist has never lost a battle before. However, 
Hikaru insists that it would be dishonorable to interfere. At the scene of the battle, Spider-Man notices the flyboys hovering over him uh, to cut off any chance of escape. The distraction almost costs Spider-Man his life as the specialist swings his sword. Spider-Man responds by slashing the specialist's hand, forcing him to drop the sword. However, the specialist is far from helpless as he pulls out a pair of nunchucks. While above, one of the flyboys wants to fly down and attack Spider-Man, despite orders to do otherwise. Elsewhere in the city, Gabriel O'Hare is working on a VR simulation of a Native American village when someone rings his doorbell. He hopes that it is Casey, but it turns out to be Miguel's fiance, Dana D'Angelo. She is worried about Miguel because he hasn't been answering her calls. Gabriel says that he doesn't have a tight relationship with his brother. Dana tells Gabriel not to be distant with her, that they are still friends, even though she left Gabe for his brother. Ooh. Oh, that's all. Oh. Burn. She's one of Ouch. those. Okay. Ouch. Mm -hmm. Their moment is interrupted when the public eye feed turns on, showing them <laughs> the battle between Spider-Man and the specialist. At the scene of the battle, Casey spots the flyboy who is circling close to the ground and leaps up onto his hovercraft. She kicks him <laughs> off and then races towards Spider-Man. Seeing an escape, Spider-Man fires a web line onto the hovercraft. Unfortunately, the specialist manages to grab Spider-Man's leg as he tries to escape. The specialist continues to attack, mocking Spider-Man for not having the killer instinct to eliminate a foe. With the added weight, Casey is having a difficult time keeping the hovercraft steady. With no other choice, Spider-Man digs his claws into the specialist's wrists and lets him uh, and tells him to let go. The specialist refuses to let go, but he ends up getting slammed into the side of a building. <laughs> Despite his better judgment, Spider-Man swings down and rescues the specialist. The specialist still refuses to give up fighting. Losing his temper, Spider-Man slashes uh, the specialist's throat open. Seeing this, Sergeant Estevez orders the public eye to open fire on Spider-Man. This goes against Tyler Stone's orders, but, the, but they fire anyway. Struck by the bullet, Spider-Man is sent falling over the edge of a building and down into the darkness below. Yes. Another cliffhanger ending. Oh, nice, Noel. First, Noel says, nice shirt, Justin. Oh, yes. Thank you. Shut up, Noel. I need, I need, I need clicks and views. I've got to have the eye candy, okay? <laughs> That's right. It's summer, and I demand to be comfortable. Exactly. Like, like <laughs> got that shirt. You probably don't have pants on, so come on. <laughs> You called it. <laughs> That's what Lolf was saying the other day. She's like, she's like, what do you think I had on camera half the time? And I'm like, oh, you're <laughs> exactly. Uh, exactly. Poor Gabe. Comfort, she's, comfort is paramount. She's sticking around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, oh. yeah. Dana, does, Dana uh, demands a certain kind of lifestyle. Waving <laughs> around in here. <laughs> Dana likes to keep it in the family. You know. Oh my! She's like hawk too. You got it. You know that guy. <laughs> oh, that's naughty. Uh, uh, you know, uh, two both brothers. You know, she's got to give them the old gobble gobble. <laughs> There you go. The internet's going to the internet is all a buzz with Hawk too. We got gobble gobble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I am gonna make you fame yeah, internet famous. Better. Yeah, we've got a better version. Exactly. That's they like that southern accent. Wait till they can't think, catch them with that Australian accent. Gobble yeah. gobble. They won't know what hit them. Damn it. Oh my god! I have to mention that to him tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the Spider Cast, exactly. That's right, kids. Ultimate Spider Cast was that two eighty two. We're going to talk some more. Uh, well, Kane, Scarlet Spider. So, ooh, Kane is in the house. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So, what do you think of five, Justin? I love this. I love the action here. We have some great um, fight scenes between Spider Man and the Specialist, and Casey. Casey once again being my spirit animal. Jumping up on that guy's hovercraft and be like, "You should have belted on stud," and she kicks him off. Yes, face off on it. I'm like, "Oh my god, I love this! I love this woman so much. <laughs> She's she is fantastic." Yeah, this is great, and we've got some like some tremendous like full page panels of action here mm -hmm. that are just gorgeous to behold. I love this artwork. I can't say oh, enough yeah. good things about it. Yeah. Yeah, you, you you say the name Rick Leonardi. Spider Man twenty ninety nine is the first thing that mm. comes to my head. Me too. Me too. 
absolutely. And I noticed too, reading this earlier, like some of the background panels, they could kind of just be duds because there's no, there's like there's li literally nothing in the background in a lot of these panels. Mm. But the colorist does a good job of like inserting kind of different colors to fill it in and make it so that it's just not blank space. Yeah. And so that it's it's eye catching and it's interesting and it still looks good. Oh, good point. No. Uh let me uh stupid mouse. All right. Uh yeah, no, so I love how much more mm. brutal Rick seems to draw the 2099. Yes. Yeah. Very very brutal and kind of dirty looking and yeah. And the colorist too does a good job of portraying it as kind of that. Mm. Like very kind of grim and yeah. Just it, it looks very very much dystopian, totally. Oh yeah, wait till we, wait till these next couple issues when we get to downtown. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's even more grimy. Yeah. All right, you ready for six? Yes. All right, uh, downtown. Uh, Either do the six or do the nine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, AI Lilith. <laughs> All right, Spider Man 2099, number six, April 1993, downtown. Uh, we got the same team here again. In the slum known as downtown, a pair of watchdogs. Oh, the watchdogs are oh. in the neighborhood. They spot a young mother and her child walking down the street. Checking their computer records, they determine that her insurance isn't paid up and decide to have some fun. They grab the woman and her child and drag them into a nearby alley. However, before the men can rape the woman, Spider-Man suddenly emerges from the garbage asking for help. The two watchdogs recognize the reluctant hero from the uptown video feeds and try to eliminate him. Quickly thinking, Spider-Man quickly dispatches the two thugs. When he asks the woman where he is, she runs away in fear, leaving the masked hero more confused and disoriented than ever. He tries to climb back up to Nouveau York, but it is too painful because he broke something when he fell. Well, when he got shot. Uh, <laughs> spotting the watchdog's buggy, he climbs in and asks the vehicles on board the computer to return him to Babylon Towers. Unfortunately, the location is out of range. He then tells the vehicle to get him out of there. Meanwhile, Uptown, Tyler Stone and his board of directors go over the footage of Spider-Man being mowed down by the public eye. He believes that Spider-Man is dead and is furious at Sergeant Estevez for disobeying orders and fires him with prejudice. With that, Tyler has his assistant Winston uh, remove Estevez from the building. On his way out, the former sergeant vows to get revenge against Tyler Stone. That's when Tyler Stone is contacted by the CEO of Alchemax, who demands to know why they failed to capture Spider-Man as he wanted to use the hero against Stark Fujikawa. According to the CEO, this is a lost potential, especially since he was familiar with the original Spider-Man. He then warns Stone that he must restore the company's faith in him, then terminates the call. Stone calls Winston back into his office and orders a team of public eyes gathered uh, to go searching for Spider-Man's body downtown. Uh, oh, okay. That's what I thought I read. That shadowy figure. I don't think they ever caught. I don't think they ever revealed it. But according to Peter David, the shadowy CEO of Alchemex was originally intended to be an aged Peter Parker. Oh wow! Yeah, really? I, I know. When I read this, I'm like, oh, it's probably Norman Osborn. No, he's saying that, that was supposed to be old old man Peter Parker. Oh wow! Uh, however, that's cool. However, Pat Mills and Tony Skinner revealed in Ravage 2099-11 that the Alchemex CEO was an entirely different entity known as Avatar. Avatar, was, I was going to say, yeah, Avatar was, was, so, yeah. Yeah, was the dude later on who met his demise at the hands of Doom. Yes. Yeah, Doom put the boots to that dude, yeah. But yeah, now I'm all intrigued. I'm like, man, I want to see the story Peter David would have wrote, you know, had that been old Peter, old man Peter Parker. I know. I want to read that now. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. God, because he would have been what? At, how old would he have been at the time of this? Uh, 2099. Like, God, I don't know. I mean, what's he? I mean, he's supposed to be what in the present day in his 20s or something. So I mean, yeah, It'd be some type of old cyborg. Yeah. That's how, or his spider powers are keeping him alive, or something. Mm, that's possible. Yeah, maybe he had some youth, youth thing. I mean, he, Look, I mean, he's no Wolverine, but he has kind of. I mean, he does heal quicker than normal, so maybe. Mm. Yeah. 
That's true. That's true. Yeah, uh, should, be should, should have taken bets how long this was going to take. Noel says, I love how Peter David mostly thought the dystopia of the future yes. Was corporate. Yes. I love the sequence in the beginning with the insurance about how they've got this tablet. This oh, is they can just check anybody and you know, check anybody's ID on that thing and be like, oh, you haven't paid up your insurance yet. Oh, well, I guess we can rape you. You didn't pay your insurance. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And I mean, this was 1992, 1993. No, which is coming true fast. Yeah. Twenty, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, we're pretty much almost already there. Yeah. Although I think it's, I think it's, no, I think it's kind of a uh, dead heat race between, uh, yes, corporations and uh, po politics. So. Mm. Yeah, which is going to destroy us quickly. Although they're so <laughs> intertwined, they're so intertwined at this point. You know, everyone yeah, together. So. Which they were in twenty ninety nine too, and oh, as yeah. we discover later on, the politicians oh, were very much. You know, on the pockets of the corporations. Meanwhile, the buggy continues to drive the injured. That's in uh, says one in the same. Yep. <laughs> Meanwhile, the buggy continues to drive the injured Spider-Man through downtown. Delirious from the pain, he thinks he is talking to his holographic assistant, Lila. He explains how he survived the fall by using his talons to scrape along the wall to slow his fall. Still, his body is seriously injured and says he needs to get to a doctor. This activates the voice commands in the buggy and that begin bringing him to the nearest doctor. Elsewhere, Casey Nasher searches downtown aboard her stolen public eye hovercraft looking for any sign of Spider-Man. Having no luck, she decides to get some help from she get to get some friends to help. At that same moment, uptown, Gabriel is ru rushing to his car, trying to brush off his ex-girlfriend Dana D'Angelo. Uh, exes. She wants to know why he is sudden, why he suddenly wants to take off after they saw Spider Man's apparent demise. He brushes it off and tells her that he has an appointment that he needs to get to. However, he actually drives toward the tunnel to downtown. Once his car reaches the end end of the maglev lines, it switches the tires. I love it. She's like, "You're not going downtown, are you?" He's like, "Of course not. They don't even have maglev down here. They're not going to drive on tires." <laughs> uh. While back in downtown, the buggy pulls up to a nearby dock in a docks in a box. The doctor comes out and sees the injured man in the buggy. Uh, he calls for a nurse. By this time, the public eye has arrived in downtown. Learning about Spider-Man's survival and theft of a buggy and are working with the watchdogs to track it. As they follow the signal, they're unaware that a strange winged figure is watching them from the rooftops. Hmm. Later, Spider-Man wakes up in the docks in a box uh, with his wounds treated. The doctor explains, it says he, but I thought it was a she. Doctor explains that they help the hero for free because they are a Thorite and Spider Man is considered a harbinger of Thor. <laughs> yes. Yeah, holy figure. Yeah. Yes. However, Spider Man doesn't want to listen to this religious nonsense and leaves. Once outside, he is surrounded by the public eye and watchdogs. When he tries to escape in the buggy that brought him, they blow it up. Making a run for it, Spider-Man sets up webbing snares to knock down two of the public guys who chase after him. That's when the hero is cornered by members of the watchdogs. However, before they can apprehend Spider-Man, something swoops down and cuts the watchdogs to ribbons. Still weak from his injuries, Spider-Man begins to pass out when he's picked up off the ground by a man calling himself the Vulture, who believes that he and Spider-Man will become great friends. Yeah. <laughs> Another cliffhanger ending. Yes, yeah, I know. One read after the other. I love it. Mm -hmm. I, I love the whole concept of docks in a box, too. That was fantastic. Mm -hmm. well, Just yeah. this random, like, little box in, in every, every neighborhood with a doctor in it. And, it's, and especially, yeah, like downtown. Like, uh, did I explain this? I think where it's like, yeah, this is the this is the original New York City, and that uh, you know, sometime in the future, they just started building on top of. Yeah, it, yeah. All, you know. <laughs> yeah, they they couldn't build around it. They ran out of place to build, so they just kept going upwards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because even you know, a lot of people like Miguel's like, what is this place? You know, even you know, he doesn't even yeah. know what it is. Yeah, it's like a no man's land. People are forbidden mm -hmm. to go there. Yeah. Yeah, I think of the vulture even tells him later in one of these upcoming issues, like, yeah, it's like it's either you know the poor or you know whatever, you know, just people, you know, yeah, unemployed, poor, exactly. Yeah. Mm. I love the art on that page where um, he's talking to Lyle and and kind of reminiscing about his fall down the side of the, the, the oh, yeah. side of the building. The art in that is fantastic. It's just so good. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's just the way they like colored that too, just like the like the purple. Yes. Like. Yeah. It's so good. Right. Yeah, this art this artwork is really, really fantastic. Yeah, and, and I love how we have different kind of glimpses into the world of twenty ninety nine in this issue. Mm-hmm. Which we which we had bits and pieces of in the other issues leading up to this, but this one featuring the spotlight on the downtown stuff, I felt gave a better glimpse of what this world was really about. Oh yeah, because I mean we would follow Miguel around, who basically, I mean, as we'll find out later, he was basically a child prodigy. Alchemex was after him pretty early on, and mm. so yes, he's lived a very cushy life. Mm. Yeah. All right. Anything else, or should we get the number seven? No, let's, yeah, let's move on to the next one. All right. Uh, all right. Spider Man 2099, number seven from May 1993. Wing in a prayer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> looks like mostly the same here. This this time we got colorist Steve Busoletto. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, after blacking out during a clash with the watchdogs and public eye, Spider-Man is pulled off the streets of downtown by the Vulture. He is observed by Casey Nash, who tries to save the hero from the Vulture's clutches. The Vulture then uses his talents to wreck Casey's hovercraft, sending her crashing. Seeing this, Spider-Man struggles to get free so he can save Casey. The Vulture knocks him out and flies away, while Casey manages to bail out of her crashing hovercraft. <laughs> Meanwhile, Dana D'Angelo goes to Babylon Towers to look for her fiancé, Miguel O'Hara. There, his holographic assistant, Lila, tells her that Miguel has been home for a few days. In her concern, she ignores the strange things that Lila is saying that would have given away his double identity. That's so funny. She's like, she's like, well, if you want to get to the street quicker, you could jump out the window. She's like, oh, thanks. And then she walks, <laughs> walks out the door and Lila's like, like Miguel did the other day. <laughs> Goodbye, Dana. Uh, back downtown, Gabriel searches the streets for any sign of his brother. Uh... <laughs> along the way he runs into the Fenris gang who tries to steal his maglev car not willing to give up his ride Gabriel plows through them managing to take one of their guns at that moment Spider-Man wakes up in a cell and is feeling much better however something really smell, smells really bad oh boy Ooh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> realizing that he's been locked out the reluctant hero decides to try and get out. That's when the vulture second co- in command, Sergeant in Arms, comes to bring him food. Spider-Man waits until the sergeant gets close enough to be knocked out when he smashes through the cell door. In the next room, he finds the vulture drinking some crimson liquid from a bowl. He welcomes Spider-Man and introduces the hero to his gang, the Freakers. Uh, Spider-Man is also told that he is downtown, a section of old New York that exists in squalor since Nuva York was built over top of it. It is viewed as the bottom of the corporate ladder and rival gangs of freaks and outcasts struggle in a game of survival of the fittest. The Vulture has gotten it into his head that Spider-Man was created by one of the one of the many independent corporations or indies, which I'll get into later in the series. Mm. Unfortunately, Spider-Man's own ignorance of the outside world proves to anger the Vulture. While back uptown, Sergeant Rico Estevez returns to his apartment after being fired from the public eye by Tyler Stone. There he discovers that all of his belongings have been repossessed and that he is being evicted from his apartment, courtesy of Elkamex. Furious, Estevez vows to get revenge against Tyler Stone. Back at the Vulture's Den, Spider-Man listens to the gang leader's proposal to take down Elkamex. As he listens to the Vulture's insane ravings, he looks around the room and notices that there are a lot of human skeletons laying around. He quickly puts together that the Vulture and his Freakers are a gang of cannibals. The other white meat. Ah. All right. Uh, This realization angers Spider-Man that he savagely attacks the Vulture. However, the hero is forced to fall back when Sergeant in Arms begins to open fire, prompting Spider-Man to retreat. Meanwhile, Tyler Stone is on a virtual sailing expedition when he is contacted (laughs) by Hikaru of Stark Fujikawa. The rival CEO is upset at what happened to his agent, the specialist, during his battle with Spider-Man. Here, 
Hikaru has figured out that Stone intentionally hired the specialist because Spider-Man would get involved and remove him from the playing board. Seeing this as an insult, Hikaru warns Tyler that, it will, that he will not forget this insult. With the call over, Tyler is interrupted by his assistant, Winston, who tells him that Miguel's fiance, Dana D'Angelo, has come to see him. Terminating the virtual reality simulation, Stone agrees to visit her. She has come to confront Tyler for addicting Miguel with rapture and has come to give her a piece of it, her mind. However, Tyler Stone quickly manipulates the situation into making Dana sympathetic to him over Miguel's strange behavior. Downtown, Spider-Man continues to flee from the Vulture's lair and ends up in the meat locker where the Vulture stores the bodies of his victims. The stench of rotting meat is too much for the hero who makes a quick escape up an elevator shaft to get out of the stench. However, the Vulture isn't following closely behind. Uh, even Spider-Man's attempt to crush the Vulture under an elevator car fails and their fight is taken into the air. Elsewhere, Gabriel continues to search for his brother when someone sneaks up behind him. Frightened, Gabriel turns around and fires his gun. It's only then that he realizes that he had just shot his girlfriend, Casey Nash. <laughs> Oops. I'm sorry, it should be. Oh, yes, he, sh he realized he shot his girlfriend, Casey Nash. <laughs> <laughs> A cliffhanger and an oopsie all in one. Mm -hmm. That was the surprise. That was a real big surprise. I thought that the cliffhanger was going to be something to do with the vulture, but no. Yes. <laughs> no. It's just Gabriel being a dumbass. No, uh, no, I've gotten to the Thor worshippers yet. Yeah, I mean they're kind of in and the out. Thorites, like, yeah. Yeah, like in, I know in the first three when we covered them, yeah, there was a Thorite up on the roof when he was originally escaping mm -hmm. from Elka Max. And yeah, the doctor who patches them up in this one is a Thorite. Yeah. They do, yeah, they do appear here and there later on throughout this yeah all right uh yeah so, i love yeah. The, the i love the fact that the vulture is so different than the mm -hmm. original vulture just completely like the only thing that's the same thing is the name really and the aesthetic of the flying stuff I mean, everything else is totally yeah i mean peter david could have made him a thief or anything else but it, he literally made him a vulture he's picking the bones of his yeah. head <laughs> exactly yeah, I love that. It's so cool. And it fits this dark dystopian future to have somebody like that that would just be driven to the depths of cannibalism. Um, oh my God, is that you, Tyler? He's like, the owl. Oh, hey, Tyler. Who was that? The owl. <laughs> Watching Marvel Tales on a Saturday night. Tyler. Yeah. I'll take nice. Just some, just some, just some Spider Man 2099. And Very like, nice. Very nice. Captain Marvel is recorded next episode. <laughs> That's right. So more Peter David stuff. Yes. Peter David night here on Marvel That's Tales. right. I love the, the subplot too with Estevez. That was another thing I really enjoyed. Yeah. And another great talent of Peter David is that he has a knack for taking these characters who are really minor kind of ancillary characters that pop up. And you kind of think that they're going to be throwaway characters the first time that you read the story. You're like, oh, this, mm -hmm. this person's going to be gone like an issue or two. But they keep coming back. Like, there's, He doesn't throw them away. He actually utilizes these characters and develops them and turns them into something else later on. I absolutely love that. Like The first time I read um, his run on Hulk, I thought that was going to be the case with Marlowe. I thought, yeah, Marlo's not going to stick around very long. And I was totally wrong. I was absolutely 100% wrong. Marlo, I mean, she's, she's still around. So. <laughs> I, I was totally wrong about that. Yeah, I, I just love how he does that. He takes characters and, and you think that they're not going to be developed or turned into anything. And yeah. they, they definitely are. I'm it's thinking Marlo Marla's a favorite of Peter David's because, yeah, I mean, she went from the yeah. Hulk book for a while and then she'll be in that Captain Marvel we're talking yes. about. Episode. Yeah. yeah, I love it. Well, <laughs> but I always say it, poor Rick Jones, you know, having the fall of the Hulk as an ex-boyfriend, you know? Well... <laughs> having to fall, to fall like <laughs> Yeah, that's going to give you an inferiority complex right off the bat. They don't call it Hulk Smash for nothing. <laughs> uh. All right, should we get to the last one? Yes. All right, so we're going to uh, wrap this one up with 
Spider-Man 2099, number eight. From June 1993, Flight of Fancy. Uh, same team as the last issue. Steve Fusiletto is still here on Colors. Father Jennifer, who will appear again in this series, does her rounds among the pews of St. Patrick's Cathedral, checking on her charges. Seeing the suffering of the people of downtown... Of seeing the suffering the people of the downtown endure, she prays for a sign that things will get better. Suddenly, Spider Man comes crashing through a stained glass window, battling the vulture. <laughs> and again, it doesn't matter if it's current Marvel, future Marvel. Again, the, pe the people making the most, doing the best business, the glass makers. Yes. Yeah. Uh, elsewhere downtown, Gabriel O'Hara patches up the wound on his girlfriend's forehead. Casey Nash is unimpressed that he accidentally shot her, although she's incredibly lucky that the bullet only creased her brow. Mm. Uh, the she bullet. Just, she just shook it off. The bullet didn't kill her. She's indestructible. <laughs> Superior puss. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, she oh, however, she becomes impressed with Gabe when he tells her that he took the gun off a member of the Fenris Street Gang. She quickly tells Gabriel how she briefly met his brother, Miguel, during her brief incarceration at the hands of Alchemex. That's when there is a knock at the door. It's the members of Casey's gang, the throwbacks. He tell, she tells Gabriel that they have a job to do, but since uh, he was able to take the gun off of Fenris, he should be able to handle himself on this mission. Back at St. Peter's, Father Jennifer orders the two combatants to get out of her church. Hearing this, Spider-Man tells her that he is really trying. Deciding to indulge the priest, the vulture goes back outside, telling Spider-Man to join him if he dares. When the reluctant hero follows the vault after the vulture, he sees that the rest of the freakers are waiting for him. Trying to avoid going outside, the vulture is forced to shove Spider-Man out. Uh, forced to shove Spider-Man outside. The, her uh, the hero falls into the mob below. He tries to get away, but is pulled back down into the mob. At that moment, at Alchemex headquarters, Tyler Stone takes Dana D'Angelo on a virtual tour of the company's big projects. He first shows her their Mars One prototype colony, then the undersea facility dubbed Atlantis. Ooh. He goes on to explain how important Miguel's bioengineering work is to these projects. Recalling how Dana works for the New Market, Ag uh, New Market Agro Department of Cynthia East, she, uh, he suggests working on a partnership between Cynthia and Elkamex. And uh, later on in this series, he's going to uh, suggest uh, a much more personal partnership. Mm. Mm -hmm. Uh... <laughs> No, always with you. No, I feel like Peter David came from the Gerber school, like JMD Mateus. Oh yeah, he's like everyone learned it. Jed, Steve Gerber's feet. Yeah, uh, he was great. He was one of the greatest. Oh. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that the story? Like Peter David was working. Was it like in the accounting department or something? And like he wanted to try his hand at writing and just. just oh like, really? I think so. he was working. Yeah, I think he was working on something. It wasn't like the creative end, and like. Somehow he got a shot and just like impressed the hell out of them, I guess. Was it on Spider-Man or something? It was like one of his I, early. Yeah. I think that's one of the first ones that Marvel it is one started of the first with ones, was, yeah. was, was Spider-Man. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I didn't know that he would work in the accounting department. That's I, I can't remember if it was the accounting, but yeah, I, I, I seem to remember it wasn't like a, on the creative end of things, but mm -hmm. yeah. That's great. Oh, yeah. Uh... Well, back downtown, Spider-Man begins losing his temper with the members of the Freakers and threatens to kill them if they don't stop. He's grabbed from behind by Sergeant at Arms, who holds Spider-Man up for the Vulture to strike. However, the hero manages to struggle free, making the Vulture strike his own man. <laughs> right in the Oops. Right in the ass. Because <laughs> <laughs> didn't, didn't the Vulture even say, "Oh, sorry, Sergeant at Arms, I, I wasn't, I wasn't in the mood for rump roast or something." Yeah, rump roast. Yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> Uh, Oops. Got Peter David uh, <laughs> dialogue there. Uh, that's when the Casey and her throwbacks arrive on the scene to lend a hand. With the throwbacks joining the battle, Spider Man notices his brother among their numbers. Not wishing anyone else to get hurt, the reluctant hero tries to climb away. The vulture follows after him, catching up with Spider Man as he reaches the underside of Uptown. There, Spider Man has the advantage among the pipes and other outcroppings. Ultimately, the hero manages to snare the vulture and webbing, making the vulture fall back to downtown. With the battle over, Spider-Man decides to check to see if his brother is safe. 
then heads back home. Back uptown, former public eye sergeant Rico Estevez is wondering what to do now that he is unemployed and homeless. He is approached by a woman named Angela Daskalakis. Uh, she offers him the opportunity to get back against Tyler Stone and Spider-Man. Interested, Rico accepts the offer. Mm. Not exactly a cliffhanger ending in this one, but it definitely sets up the stage for what happens next. Oh, definitely. Yeah, there's more stuff with Estevez coming, which is great. Uh, all right. So, yeah, again, I, I, I'm i sure you you love this series. I love this series. Again, oh, yeah. This is, yeah. Yeah, this is gold. Yeah, I love this one. Again, if you guys I, love Spider-Man 2099, like in Across the Spider-Verse and stuff, yeah. Mm. I mean, read all of the stuff. But, yeah, start with the 90s stuff. Again, that's where it all began. Mm. It's on Marvel Unlimited. So I think the whole series is, right? Yes, I believe. Yes, some of the okay. things on there. So maybe I'll maybe I'll whip that up and go back and read the rest of these that I'm missing mm. instead of waiting until I get the floppies. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah this, you, only read it, you only have what the, like 21 or something you said. Yeah, tw- 20, oh. 21 or twenty two, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Because like I know I know it wasn't twenty five because that had the special cover and I don't have that one. Yeah, no, because yeah, they were that. That's a big one. They reveal like two different like secrets in that one, mm. and then yeah, mm. yeah. Later on, was it in the late thirties or something? We get like Venom twenty ninety nine. Venom, stuff. yeah, yeah. Yep. I missed all that stuff. Yeah, I'd like to read that. And towards the end, we get like a version of the Green Goblin. Yes, that's right. Oh, was, yes, it, was that in the Peter David stuff with the Green Goblin? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, excellent. Pretty sure, yeah. Noel's, oh yeah, yes, they are all in Marvel Unlimited. Noel, that original series. So nice. I don't know if the rest yeah. of the series are, but yeah, Spider Man is. I know that. Yeah, that would be that would be definitely worth reading in full. I think that they've collected it too in a couple of various collections. The whole thing. I think over so, the yeah. years, I think there's a few trade paperbacks available. Although that those those are probably going for a mint now. I would imagine. Yeah, I'm sure they are. Yeah. Oh, my Lord, I was going to say, okay, everyone starts snapping up your Fantastic Four, Silver Surfer, and probably Doctor Doom, whatever, yes. once that movie hits, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Because like we were talking about on Marvel, or uh, X-Men Classics, I mean, Wolverine 88 from the 90s is going up in price now, because that was the first encounter of Wolverine and Deadpool. Oh, right. <laughs> the one that we covered on uh, X-Men Classics. Yes. Yeah, with Diane, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, Noel says, I think I've, yeah, he says he, he's seen those in his, those collections at his mm. LCS. Yep. Yeah, those would be nice to get too if you don't want to get all the floppies. To get yeah. Paperbacks. Yeah, that'd be nice. Hopefully, I, they'll do like some epic collections or something of the 2099 line. Yeah, yeah, they should. That'd be nice. That'd be nice to see that. Because yeah. again, Spider Man made it to 46. The rest of those series, I don't think, even made it that far. So some of them you can probably do in one volume this, you know. Even if you do like two volumes or something, you know, you could do two volumes for yeah. Spider Man. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Think... There was there a Spider Man 2099 annual? Maybe I can't remember. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, maybe, maybe, unless maybe he was, maybe he was, he was like one of the few ones that got. It. Yeah, I don't, I can't remember, but yeah, I, I feel yeah, like they, they could... didn't. Most of them didn't get annuals. Yeah, I'm always of the mind that, like, yeah, they, sh- you know, especially these 90s series that didn't, you know, don't have a million issues to them, you know, they should collect all this. Oh, yeah, they did have an annual for uh, 2099s. It was just a single one in 94. And of course, yeah. it was going for 50 bucks. I was going to say, I think I have this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think I got it after the fact. But yeah. Yeah, that's, that, you could sell that and make a mint now, Phil. I know. You know what? Oh God! You know what I have that I think is worth at least a couple, like hundred bucks. The original volume of Ultimate Spider-Man, number oh. one. They did. It's like a variant cover where the black background's just like blank white. Oh wow! Yeah, I think that one's going for. I, I know. Last time I looked a few years ago, it was like a couple hundred bucks. I thought. No kidding. All right, so. Anything else on these, Mr. Justin? No, I really loved this story with the Vulture and the Specialist. I thought both of those were great. And the stuff we're going on with, like Noel was saying, just showing how how kind of 
grim and gritty this world is. Peter mm-hmm. David did such a great job of that in the series, really kind of show, peeling back the layers and showing the reader what this world was really like, which they did to a certain degree in the other series as well, but it, it was different. It was handled much differently. And here, like I said, you kind of you really see in depth the lives of some of these people. Yeah, it's great. And I, I love too the like I said the stuff with Casey. She's fantastic. The, the the subplot with Estevez was great. Yes. Some of the some of the surprises, the surprise cliffhangers were always fun. Yeah, it's a great series. This is just gold. And and the the fact that he was writing three series at the time. He was doing this. He was doing Hulk. He was doing X Factor. I still can't wrap my head around it. That the, the level of quality was just so high for all three of those series. That was, was just Marvel because I was going to say, was he writing? Oh no, this was, this might have been before the fact, but eventually he had like Supergirl to that too. Well, oh Supergirl yeah, like, uh, oh, might have been. Mid-90s. I feel like that was later though, wasn't it? It yeah. might have been after Spider Man and this Spider Man twenty ninety nine ended, but yeah, because he I went mean, to he, was, he went to Aquaman for a while too. Yeah. Oh yeah, he might be yeah. right Aquaman at this point. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So. So yeah, he was doing so much, and just it was always consistently so good. I just yeah, I, I can't say enough good things about Peter David, and like I said, the artwork from Rick Leonardi also. Yes, like this this I think is really his best work. I loved all of his Spider Man stuff that he did in the eighties, but this I feel is just some of his best artwork ever. Yeah, I just love it to bits. Oh yeah, like I said, the first thing I think of when I hear Rick Leonardi is this this art. Yeah, yeah. There's a great poster, actually, of Rick Leonardi. Um, I think it was in one of the 30th anniversary issues. Oh yeah, of, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Is it is Spider-Man it Peter... 29 and and Peter Parker together? Yes, I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's a beauty. I might dig that out and throw that into a frame one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, th- I probably have that an issue somewhere yeah that is so it's basically like a double page spread but yeah, yeah it's good totally, yeah. yeah noel says rick's best work and my favorite peter work you nice. know what i love this but i don't know i might still have to give it to him for hulk is my favorite peter david stuff mm, i think that's my favorite favorite too yeah yeah so but this is this is right up there and x factor too it's tough because i love x the x factor, factor so yeah much. x factor yeah. is so good yeah it's but again really I, might have to, I might have to give it to joe fix it the joe fix it era yeah mm, mm-hmm. the gray hulk Ugh. yeah that's so good yeah all right so well well next time we're going to cover some more peter david this yes. time from Captain Marvel zero through three from the year two thousand. Yeah, so we're gonna jump ahead a little bit here. Uh, and these were new to me; I hadn't read these before, so that was also exciting. Yes. Yeah. No, I'm not as attached to. Uh, he's not as attached to Hulk. And he goes that Miguel and Peter crossover is silly. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Miguel. Yeah, they sw- swap places. And Miguel yeah, uh, yeah. up in bed with Mary Jane. <laughs> yeah. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> so yes yeah next time we're gonna cover captain marvel G- genus bell uh from the peter date well the first peter david uh mm. volume because they did he did do two volumes of it so yes and oh and i had forgotten until i did the reread yeah one of your favorites is in their moon dragon yes i was excited to see her and she looks great too the mm. artwork and that's so good yeah uh and then uh in two weeks, yeah, we're going to get back to the Alpha Flight, just like we got back to Spider-Man yeah. 2099 here, Alpha Flight 5 through 8. So, yeah, some John Byrne Alpha Flight. Yeah, going back to one of our more popular episodes on Marvel Tales from the past. Going back to the 80s, bitch. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I got to read that again. It's been so long since I read that crossover between the two spider-men uh, <laughs> miguel we'll giving up the jjj is super funny <laughs> <laughs> all right so yeah and then after the alpha flight episode we start our uh atlantis attacks crossover yes. on nine weeks of atlantis attacks because we're going to cover all the annuals all summer long so yeah so we're basically going to hit everyone who's in the marvel universe at that point yeah what was it 1989 19... I think so, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm excited. All the Spider-Man, the Fantastic Four Avengers, all the X-Books, uh, Silver Surfer, Punisher. Yeah. Punisher, yeah. Daredevil. Yeah, everyone, everyone, it seems like everyone who's in the Marvel Universe at that point is going to be in this. So It was amazing that they, they tied it all together like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't think I don't think I don't think everyone was in Evolutionary War, but yeah, the no, they and Atlantis, weren't. Yeah, they they pretty much they tied in everyone. I think so, <laughs> yeah. with varying degrees of success. We'll yeah, yeah. <laughs> as we'll discover as we go in depth. Oh yeah, uh, takes off his mask and says, "Do you know me?" <laughs> <laughs> Rules for reading Spider Man and Spider Man 2099 as we speak. Oh, uh, all right. So, yes. So, send us your thoughts on all the upcoming stuff or your Spider Man 2099 thoughts. Uh, oh, darn it. I didn't throw any of the covers up this time. Darn it. I had them. Oh, well, again. you've got them in the background, though. Yeah, that's so, true. Yes. If you're watching this video, the yes, they are in the background. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, I went for, went for my uh, social media thing here and I was just like, Man, I had... uh, darn it! I spent on, I, I stayed up late doing that too last night. Damn it! Oh, uh, all right. I'll try to remind you for the Captain Marvel one if you forget. Well, yeah. <laughs> now that I yelled at myself, yeah, I should remember the Captain Marvel one. <laughs> Sorry, kids. I'm kind of laggy here because i think it's uh i think the computer's getting hot because of uh oh yes damn weather it's summertime summertime in the city all right capes and lunatics yes again and again like i said of course like the genius that i am they made my podcast room the only room in the house that doesn't have air conditioning so <laughs> uh so yes capes and lunatics at gmail.com or 614 382 2737 that's 614 38 capes and remember, you can find all things Capes and Lunatics episodes, social media, merchandise. Again, get your brand new Capes and Lunatics. Capes and get the Lunatics brand new stuff. Capes. Yes, new logos, new merch. Again, the old stuff's on there, too, if you want to look like Old Man Ray. Uh, <laughs> bye, Ray. And, of course, there's a ran random cash app link if you just want to rain money on us. Uh, again, Lilf demands it. Make it rain. And, of course, the Patreon where... Wilf and I try to do something different every month. Uh, the, again, the June F. Well, the June episode will be uh, we talk uh, all the LGBTQIA characters from Marvel and DC. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, so, yes. Please join the Patreon. Please rain ran the money on us. Pretend we are that girl dancing away through uh, college or cosmetology school or whatever it is. She looks like she was just working a f***ing stripper pole down at Divas. Uh, thank you. No, yes, I know. Also, old men forget. All right, so yes, yeah, so find it all, all in one place. That's tubespace. Io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. It's tubespace. Io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. More vicious and brutal than ever. All right, so uh, now for this Justin the Owl again. You can catch him here every week on Marvel Tales. You can catch him. Uh, Again, at least once or twice a month on X-Men Classics with me. Uh, catch him here once a month on Energon Universe with me and Russell talking all the new Transformers and G.I. Joe stuff coming from Image. And again, uh, over on Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks, you can catch him once a month at least on We Are The Night, <gasps> the, the Batman Podcast, where we talk all things Asriel. But again, he's been known to drop in for a Catwoman or a Killer Moth every so often. Yes, some special uh, stuff, and I'll be showing yeah. up later on this year. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We all. Again, I always try to get Lilith and Justin together as much as I can. <laughs> like to tempt fate and like that. <laughs> all right, but that's, that's right. But that's not the only place this man podcast. So Justin, yes. where else? Are there, where yes. else can people find you? On this lovely uh, little advertisement that Phil has created, you can also find me on Gamma Charge, the strongest Marvel podcast there is. We talk about the Incredible Hulk and the sensational She-Hulk with my pal Russell every month. And Predator and Prey, the Yucha podcast. We're joined by the High Priest of Khonshu, Ray, and we are currently discussing the classic Dark Horse comics 
that are focused on the predator, as well as my last and not least, uh, my solo project, The Lost Library of Legends, is still going strong. And by the time that this episode comes out, I should have a new episode on an image title called Wildstar. Ooh, going back to the 90s here, bitch. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if that was the era I just decided to play that button. <laughs> yeah, that was oh, from the 90s. That's good. That was from the 90s. Good, yeah, good guess. Oh, nice. Uh, Double biscuits for me. <laughs> I love drunk Justin videos. Well, that escalated quickly. <laughs> tap, tap, tap in my way downtown. I'm a sucker for a guy with a powerful rod. Uh, <laughs> uh, See, it's not dead bodies. Uh, Justin has biscuits in his meat locker. That's right. That's right. One for every night. All right. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> All right, thank you for joining us. Come back in well in one week for you. We're gonna record this in a few minutes. Uh, yes, the first well, kind of like three and a half issues of Captain Marvel by Peter mm. David from the year two thousand. The year two thousand. Yeah, kids. Animals, corporations, they're all the same. Shock it, come back. Like that. <laughs>